While we cover the sport branches that are on their way to the Olympics, this time it's the MMA, a sport which might not be in the Olympics, but is one whose popularity is growing day by day all across the globe. Will this high-intensity sport one day become a part of the Olympic Games? Well, the mixed martial arts community is working extremely hard for the sport to become a part of the Olympics. It might just take a bit more of a time in order to reach where they want it to. We spoke to world MMA champion Jahan Kaplan to take an idea about how it goes down in the world of MMA. I started my sports career with wrestling. Because of this, it was easier to move on to MMA. After this, the desire to win, the feeling of competition, the might of one-on-one -on -one clash of such strength, it gives satisfaction, and after achieving victory, you feel an incredible happiness. Overcoming a tough challenge feels certainly better. No ordinary thing could give anything equal. You consider certain risks, potential accidents, but against all these, you stand out there and fight. And after the fight, when you achieve victory, you also feel very satisfied. It's a very different feeling. It's certainly something to be experienced. As I've said, it's something that's very provoking for us, this urge to win. I started my athletic career with wrestling when I was 11. After this, I had a wushu career for a couple of years, after which I've noticed that I was enjoying MMA, so we started trying that instead with my friends. That thankfully went fantastic with national championship awards, global championship awards, stepping into the professional field. With these steps, we are here right now and hopefully we'll continue on this path. You're an MMA champion and uh, you won many titles both in professional matches and amateur matches. And uh, you're also a two-time Turkish champion. Uh, so I want to ask you, uh, how do these achievements make you feel and what else is on your mind to achieve more? These championships increase our pride and desire to achieve victory and help us make better plans for our future. Because when you achieve success, you want more of it. But when you fail, you give up on the sport and you lose motivation. With victories, you always think about one step forward, one step higher, and the top for us is UFC. When you reach to the UFC level, the whole world acknowledges you. The competitions we are in right now, of course, aren't that high level yet, but they're still well known. My last championship was against the best fighter of Kazakhstan, and it was a serious fight which lasted up to 20 minutes. I had a bruise on my eye and all. Apart from this, our number one goal is how to best represent our country and our flag out there. MMA can't be considered a very new sport in Turkey. Our federation was only established in 2013. With our federation, MMA is now being acknowledged in Turkey thanks to their help and the interest for it is incredible. From young kids to teenagers, more are interested in MMA. It's even surpassing kickboxing. Our aim now is to represent our nation and our flag better on the international field because the feeling of wavering our flag there is incredible. You're getting applauded from all over, people become interested in you and they become interested in your country. The highest we can reach, which is the Bellator MMA organization, is our goal. We try to work on this goal with all of our strength, training in the morning, in the evening, conditioning and technique lessons. You have to do all the training together to achieve that victory. Because one could be a very good athlete in technique, but without strength, he or she could be knocked down or perhaps one could have strength without technique and could still get defeated. By harmonizing all of these, the conditioning, the strength, the technique, and put it out there to achieve the victory. Otherwise, as I've mentioned, MMA has many branches, be it wrestling, Muay Thai, kickboxing, or judo. 
işte güreşinden tutun e, muay thaisi, kickboksu, boksu, judo. You have to be informed on all of these a bit so you can be successful. Çünkü yer güreşi Because if you're not good at floor fighting, when you're on the floor, defeat is almost inevitable. Mağlubiyet kaçınılmaz oluyor veya da Perhaps your standing boxing isn't good enough, one punch could knock you out. That's why you should be informed on many different tactics. Our foundation is wrestling, and yes, we take advantage of this because power of wrestling is a bit different in MMA. It is certainly an advantage. Other than that, for the last three to four years, boxing, kickboxing and other types of sports we've improved upon. Jiu-Jitsu is quickly getting our attention because floor fighting is becoming more and more important. If you cannot control your enemy on the floor, they just might defeat you instead with the technique. That's why learning all of these a bit and try to be better overall is a very important thing. Even in a short match, you receive around 50 to 100 punches. Your rival is your equal, so damage is unavoidable. The week after the match is difficult on you because your body is giving 200% of its strength during the fight, so you may have, for example, a heart rate of 200 to 220. For a normal person, this is dangerously close to having a heart attack. Athletes have an advantage since they feel their rate and it doesn't tire their physical being as much, but it's really tiresome. In my last match, I received a hit in my eye and my eye was about to swell shut. But against these odds, I finished a match in four rounds. The day after, though, all I'll say is I could barely leave the bed for 15 minutes. There is a high risk of injury. As I've said, there are many branches and, for example, the elbow, which can be very damaging, one hit from it and anything can happen. Another example, a punch. Even a moderate punch can knock some 150 kg heavyweight man down because the jaw is one of the most sensitive areas. I've had some elbow injuries during practice. Thankfully, I never had any major injuries. I had a small meniscus posterior cruciate ligament surgery back in 2011 from my wrestling days. But other than that, during my six to seven years of MMA, I've never had a serious injury. So how long do you think you will continue your presence in this field? Right now, I'm 30 years old, and for five years, I'm thinking about MMA still, as long as I stay healthy and think about carrying on. I'm still thinking about how to represent my country out there because international fields are very different. To see your flag waving there or doing your victory lap with your nation's flag, it's really priceless. That's why I set myself five more years until I'm 35. I'm thinking about continuing the sport. So how does a fighter's age uh, over time affect his or her performance in the sport? After 30, no matter how well you care about your body, it starts declining, sadly. But people can still continue, taking care of their body. Some people do the sports into their 50s. These people take extraordinary care of their bodies, be it their training, their diet, their resting, they care. If you take such care of yourself, you can keep fighting until your 50s, that's for sure. But I've made my plans. After 35, I plan on training in instead of fighting, guiding newcomers in the field. How well we guide them, we train them, this sport can advance even more so. We have to show newer generations good examples, good athletes, good characters, so that they too can get motivated. So they can say things like, look at Jihan, he did so and so, we should be like him. We put forward ourselves, our characters to guide newer generations and hopefully move on like so. Today, MMA uh, has managed gaining a lot of popularity, just like football in Turkey. And uh, youngsters are particularly very interested in this sport because of its uh, energy, its thrill. So what would you say to those who want to follow your footsteps?
For newcomers, I can give some advice. They have to train well, they have to show a serious effort to stand up from average people. Sadly, nothing will happen if you train for two days and rest for five, or train for five days and relax rest of the month. Their diet, rest, training, all of these are important for success. As I've said, without a proper diet, you cannot train, or without proper training, your body cannot recover fast enough. A good diet, good training, and good rest. Have these and dedicate yourselves to training so that you can have success. Otherwise, I don't think you'll be successful. We're getting more and more aware about this in Turkey. I also coach, and from what I can see developments are in Turkey, it's happening at a very steady pace. When you stand in the octagon, the fight, which can last 15 minutes or 25, you have to endure it. Stamina is very important. Without the stamina, you may be strong, but when you can't set your pacing, your rival can defeat you in five minutes, or their condition could drop rapidly in two minutes for your advantage. If you're not strong, you may get folded like paper, unfortunately. You have to show effort. Nothing happens without showing effort. You have to endure a bit of pain, of effort, to become better better athletes in the future. We begin our training period two months before the actual match. Of course, we train throughout the year, but match training and its tempo is very different. Usually, waking up at 6 a.m., we start with our jogging. After a brief rest, we do our training, be it technique or strength. At 5 p.m., we usually do our third training routine. We keep this up during our two months of special training. Of course, we adjust our diet accordingly. Yeah, I try to have six meals each day accordingly because meals before or after training are very crucial. An improper diet decreases the training performance and with it the morale. Questions such as, why is this happening, why can't I do it, pop up. Demoralized when the match time draws near so you cannot show the desired performance in the cage, in the octagon. This is why this two-month period is as such. We try to do strength training. This changes according to our program and can be as little as a single training session or three sessions. You turn into a machine. When you do something else, you cannot focus properly since you're focused on the match. Until the match time, you become a robot. Waking up at 6 a.m., having your breakfast, jogging, and so on. A 25-minute duel is always waiting for you. If nothing new happens, you still have to stand on your feet for 25 minutes. This is no small achievement. In my last match, in the fourth round, I cannot describe the psychology over there. I couldn't even lift my arm. The disadvantage was that we were contacted very late. We went there with three weeks of training. If this was announced two months ago, I could have had my coordination and my conditioning, but since the time was short, I was on the edge. Thankfully, we fought well, but as I had mentioned, the week after, I could barely recover.
Tokyo 2020 organizers said on Friday that work on the Aquatics Center was finished in February, meaning that all the venues built for this year's Olympics have been completed on time. The Aquatic Center, which will host swimming and diving events at Tokyo 2020, was one of the eight new venues built for the Summer Olympics, in addition to Athletes Village. The National Stadium, which will form the centerpiece of the Games and host the opening ceremony on July 24, was completed ahead of schedule in November 2019. A total of 43 venues, including 25 existing facilities and 10 temporary venues, will be used at the Tokyo 2020 Games. This news comes at a time when the coronavirus outbreak has raised questions about whether the Games will be postponed or cancelled, although the government has been insistent in recent days that the competition will begin as scheduled. Children, mostly girls, in Afghanistan, Cambodia and South Africa are skating to success thanks to a non-profit that uses skateboarding to empower youth. Tracing its origins to Kabul, Afghanistan in 2007, Skatistan, based in Berlin, now reaches more than 2,500 kids aged 5 to 17 through its skate schools in the three countries it operates. In recognition of Skatistan's accomplishments, the International Olympic Committee on Friday announced the non-profit as the world winner of the 2020 Women in Sport Award in the lead-up to International Women's Day, which falls on March 8. According to the IOC, Skatistan strives to reach girls by creating female-first environments by employing female coaches and holding female-only classes and girls' days. The initiative says it has had success in reaching girls, with about half of its participants being female, despite sporting activities often being limited for girls in different parts of the world. The founder of Skatistan, Australian skateboarder and researcher Oliver Perkovic, said it all started in 2007 when he went to Kabul with three skateboards in hand. He says he started lending his boards to local youth and ended up encouraging more girls to get involved and it all took off from there. It was amazing when girls stepped on a skateboard because they didn't ride bicycles, they didn't play volleyball, they didn't play football. They weren't allowed to do those things because they were seen as activities for boys. And skateboarding was new, so it didn't have, this, didn't have these societal rules that said that girls couldn't do it. A film about Skatistan, Learning to Skateboard in a War Zone, If You're a Girl, won an Academy Award for Best Documentary Short in 2020. Shanaz Kamal pulls on her pink and white sparring mitts and gets ready for a coaching session. A young trainee boxer starts swinging as other trainees wait their turn with Pakistan's only female boxing coach. The sport is male-dominated and the country is conservative, but that hasn't stopped Peshawar-born Kamal from making her mark. She is the first and only international female boxing coach registered with the Boxing Federation of Pakistan and she's doing her best to nurture a younger generation of boxers. I am the first Pakistani woman to teach boxing. I am from Peshawar and I live in a typical village. In spite of that, I have made it in boxing. I am Pakistan's three-star international world star coach. Growing up in a family of boxers, Kamal spent her childhood secretly yearning to put on the gloves. She didn't think she would be able to realise her dream until she married a boxer. When her husband discovered her interest, he started coaching her, breaking with social norms of Pathans, the ethnic group they belong to. She started training her children on the rooftop of her house in 2008. Two years later, when there were interprovincial games, she trained some girls in the rooftop gym as there were no facilities for them to learn the sport. Some quit, but some have continued. A few of the girls who were trained there have even gone on to win medals in the South Asian Games. Kamal, 37, has three daughters and a son and is keen for her children to take on the sport. One of her daughters, Hadia Kamal, 14, even won a gold medal in 2019 at the Interprovincial Games. To date, Kamal reckons she has trained around 600 male and 150 female boxers. She says there would be more if there were government support. The future of female boxing in Pakistan is very bright, but only if we get a little bit of support. We have taken a start from zero, but by the grace of God, we have gone on to around 80 or 90 percent. 
If the government supports us, the community supports us, God willing, we can produce a 100% result, like we did in the national games.